Well, for more on the rising trade tensions around the globe, I'm joined by Jacques de Lille, live from New York. He's a professor of law and political science at the University of Pennsylvania. Welcome. Thank you. So let's start with your sense about where the China-U.S. trade relationship could be heading, especially based on what we heard from U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross today. Well, it's not looking good. I mean, we've seen this uh, rhetoric from the Trump administration where they seem to believe that threatening very high tariff levels, putting tariffs on potentially almost the entirety of Chinese exports, if you take the 200 billion that are now being looked into and the threat of another 200 billion, uh, that could really escalate into something uh, quite bad for the bilateral relationship. And I think at this point, we're all waiting and watching to see if that is bluster and bargaining chips or if there's a risk of that kind of escalation. Now, while Ross said that, he also later talked about the U.S. wanting mutually beneficial solutions, protecting intellectual property, and a level playing field when it comes to trade. And he said that addressing these issues will help China as well. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, there is some truth to that. One of the frustrating things about watching this particular episode is there are genuine problems to be addressed in the bilateral trade relationship. China has complaints about restrictions on Chinese investment in the U.S. The U.S. has complaints about restrictions on U.S. investment in China. There are intellectual property rights issues. There's a whole passel of issues. But the way to deal with those is, is to take more time to deal with the complexity and not get into what could become a trade war. Uh, and one gets the sense that as much as the Trump administration puts out a long list of concerns, some of which are real and legitimate, uh, they still seem to have this mindset, at least from the president himself, that looks at the bottom line of what the bilateral trade deficit is. And that's simply a terrible way of looking at the economics of the situation. A lot of people are wondering, why just focus on, on the, the trade deficit instead of looking at the whole picture, especially when you have the world's two biggest economies and so many other countries involved in the global supply chain? That's a very good question. And the, the question is whether it is just a good political talking point because it's an easy number that American political constituencies can get their heads around or whether this is genuinely a big part of the administration position. I mean, clearly people like Robert Lighthizer, the trade representative, understand there's something more going on. Uh, but there is a risk that that overshadows uh, the many pieces of the complexity of the relationship. And one of the things you heard in the hearings before Congress today with Wilbur Ross was the quite obvious point that if you throw these kinds of tariffs up on Chinese goods and if China retaliates, you not only raise the prices of things that happen to be exported, you know, get on the boat, as it were, in China before coming here, but you're talking about disrupting complex global supply ch chains. You're talking about hurting not only American consumers, but American producers and American exporters. Uh, and it can very quickly become a lose-lose situation. And we certainly heard lawmakers there talking about U.S. businesses essentially stuck in the middle while this trade standoff is ongoing. And then you also have ZTE, whose future is now uncertain thanks to differences between Trump and his own party on his handling of ZTE. So with no apparent end in sight right now, what can business leaders do in the meantime? Well, I think business leaders are trying to get their voices heard. And if you look at the initial list of goods that were going to be targeted by U.S. tariffs coming from China, and for that matter, the steel and aluminum coming from a number of other countries, they did get their voices heard. They're getting some exemptions, although the exemption process is a bit chaotic for steel and aluminum. And there is there's some of the items on the initial list were taken off. But I think what you're seeing in, in Congress is partly Congress is listening to the business community's concerns. Now, as on all issues, there's a very complex lens landscape. Some businesses will benefit, but many will lose. So it's not as if there's a unified business community voice. And of course, there are businesses that have had very different experiences in China. Some have had good experiences and some are among the frustrated. Now, it's easy if you're just kind of watching this from the outside as a consumer, you're thinking, well, I'm not really feeling the brunt of this, of this now. When might we begin to see the fallout for consumers? Well, I think the, the sort of immediate impact on what things cost consumers uh, is probably going to be fairly limited. There are some small areas where it's gone up. We've seen things like washing machines go up fairly quickly over concerns about the tariffs that are being put on that. Uh, but it really is a second order effect often. Uh, it's going to be the cost of inputs, which take a while to work through the system. Uh, but a lot of it also may be jobs. That is, people in the export sectors who will be hurt if China stops buying uh, because it's putting on tariffs, soybeans and machinery products and things of that ilk. And we know that Trump already has metal tariffs on China and other trade partners, including the EU. The EU is now also fighting back when it comes to their, their car exports to the U.S. Could this perhaps be an opportunity, with the U.S. kind of pushing itself to one side, for other trade relationships to perhaps flourish? 
Oh, I think that's right. I think what you'll see is, as the U.S. is seen as an irascible and perhaps not terribly reliable participant, and as being much less willing to help support the order that the U.S. did a lot to create, people will look elsewhere. The Trump hope is that people will set up manufacturing plants in the U.S., but they also may just look for other markets. And I think you're starting to see that already, as many countries have shared opposition to what the U.S. is up to. And the U.S. has made it more difficult for itself, for the Trump administration, attaching this not so much to traditional trade law and concerns about unfair trade practices, but to invoke this national security exception, uh, which really is extraordinary. And that, too, got a lot of blowback from Congress. All right. Thank you so much, Jacques Delisle there, professor of law and political science at the University of Pennsylvania.